and my mom was dead. Don't make fun of this cup. I will fuck you up. She gave All it right. A- we are live. <laughs> Welcome to the Working Fans Podcast. That's going to be the best intro ever. We will not make fun of that cup. That is Dante Barnett. He is a stand-up comic for two and a half years. He's also uh, responsible and in charge of Suitman Productions. And we're going to talk to him about all that today. But uh, first off, how you doing, man? <laughs> I'm fucking up and honorary. You know, I got my first cup of coffee today. I stayed up last night and binged watched the whole season of, um, what is it, Drive to Survive, the Formula One series on Netflix. I'm fucking pumped. That show is Ooh. awesome. All right. I'll Behind the out. scenes reality version of Formula One racing. And there's a lot of drama in that shit. And they crash and it's fucking too. Never mind. Sorry. I will know. It's funny. I'll say this because uh, one of my business, besides doing podcasting, I own a bread route and I get up at weird hours. So I'm up at like 1 30 in the morning and then I got to work until like the afternoon. And sometimes I'll click online and I'll notice the random people I see up. And I've noticed so far <laughs> that you have like, we're like, you seem to be up at all different times. I'm like, all right, this guy's a party. <laughs> hey, mind your fucking on. business, bro. Like, you're not, <laughs> we, this, we're not snitching here. Like, we've been in here for five fucking seconds. You're right. Tell everybody he's a sporadic sleeper and he's up in fall kinds. <laughs> Fuck you, man. Don't be telling on me. <laughs> Fair this enough. Third <laughs> podcast. This first time I meet you, you act like you don't know me. It's that's getting true. weird, that's dude. True. That's true. That's true. Right. You're right. Let me let me work up to that. I apologize. <laughs> You were throwing out Netflix recommendations. I got a little carried away. Hey, not, not, you're stalking me, dude. And next thing you know, you're going to tell me I watch Pornhub. Luckily, I don't even do that. So anything you say about that, I know you're lying, okay? <laughs> <Hey, buddy. laughs> All right. So obviously, you're very comfortable on the mic. How, uh, how long have you done stand-up? <laughs> uh, so I started comedy in August of 2018. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was a teacher, a banker, a football coach. I do stats for Fox Sports. I'm the stats guy. I don't look like it, but the black guy's the nerd. On the, that, that, that's a whole funnier story. <clears throat> when we got there, and they're like, so what are you, the TV personality? Where'd you play at? Nope, didn't play. That's so you awesome. the camera guys, you're kind of big. What kind of camera do you carry? Nope, don't do that either. Like, so what are you? I'm the nerd. I'm the stats guy. Yeah, the black guy's the smartest guy. Yeah, fuck you guys. <laughs> but I, I like- <laughs> I've always been in front of a camera. I mean, not a camera, but always in front of a crowd. It's just kind of who I am. Mm, okay. So that yeah, that's next question was if you always so you've always been kind of comfortable talking and kind of being uh, the party guy or the funny guy, I guess. You know, it's uh, we just I did a, I do a whole bunch of cut videos, and they just did the superlative one where you're high school guess your high school thing, and I had four people guess, and two of them said athlete of the year. You know, mm. six two two seventy. Obviously, big black guy. He played football. <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah, athlete of the year. And I was kind of bitter because I was like, I should have won athlete of the year. I went out in a whole speech and grabbed my little soapbox and my little cards and had a little presentation. No, I'm fucking with you. But <laughs> the, the other two guesses were class clown and actually what I got, which was biggest brown noser. Right. <laughs> and the one who got it right, he was like, "So you're smart." And I was like, "Yeah." And he said, "You didn't get along with the teachers." I was like, "No." He's like, that could still cause animosity from the students because they're jet. Like, how the fuck are you getting good grades? You're an asshole. You're an asshole. <laughs> you're supposed to be fucking dumb. And you're black, right? And so since high school, I, I did FBLA. I used to host our MLK uh, assembly thing. Um, and then when I taught in, at Col- in Green River, I taught for two years teaching IT and like database and um, customer service and IT and HTML. And I'd make class fun. <clears throat> Like you can go, you can Google right now, Dante Barnett rate my professor, and I I got like five out of five, and I've had eight people rate me, and they're like, he's a great teacher. He made database class fun, and it's because our first day, I I'm, I'm very good at this hyper, you know, just going at people and talking shit. And I'd be like, you know, everybody carries a database, and they'd be like, what are you talking about? They're like you got a database right here, your fucking phone. <laughs> this is based on databases. That's how yeah. you put one. Lo- what do you think a single login is? It stores one place. Oh shit! Now we're getting real nerdy. They're gonna find out. That's all right. He is a fucking nerd. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna everything. So I- I'd be able to talk about this shit and then make it a scenario and be able to role play with people on the spot and be impromptu and talking about stuff. That's like, so you're a business owner, right? And you want to make money. How do you make money? Well, you keep a database of people who you work with. Now, let's say you sell services and you've got an overabundance of stock. Well, at this point, your profit margin's already lost, so you're losing money. So it's better to sell it at a short cost and get your space back and get rid of the inventory 
than it is to sit on it. Now, if you've got a customer database who tells you the stuff that people buy and their propensity to buy shit, and you notice you got 40 customers that always buy daddy's doggy treats because they're all organic and vegan and you're fucking snowflake in Seattle, well, you send those 40 people an email mm. saying, hey, that bullshit vegan brand you wanted, it's on sale. <laughs> Super sale. Do you want to come get some? And guess what? It liquidates faster. So now you can see how a database with proper implementation and marketing can really infect your business. Now, mm. in five seconds, I've just, well, in about a minute and a half, <laughs> I just gave you a speech that I do in class. It's worth millions, not millions. It's, I used to, it should be worth millions, but that analogy and getting that across and then taking the idea of a database to marketing, to sales, to implementation. I did that for you in a minute and a half. You just showed why you're comfortable talking and a stat guy. <laughs> right there, right? <laughs> I need to do a TED talk on coffee. <laughs> That's what, I think that should be my goal to get a TED talk. I think I could handle it. They could give me any topic. I could go for a fucking hour. Dude, yeah, I um, like even too. I was thinking like you were a bank teller too. Like I'm thinking like, <laughs> yeah, oh well, yeah, not a bank teller. I was oh. a I was a licensed rep. I was a oh. I was the guy at the desk. Get yeah. it right, Mitch. <laughs> you were selling. I talked to you about <laughs> loans. I had my financial credentials. I wasn't a fucking teller. It's like calling me a janitor. You piece of shit. <laughs> I'm a manager of custodial arts. Get it right. Uh, what is it? A flight attendant. I'm not a goddamn steward. Yo, you son of a bitch. I'm a steward. <laughs> Set us back years. You son of a bitch. You're going to call me colored while I'm on here too, man? <laughs> Dave, what the fuck? I'm not going to insult that cup. That I do. <laughs> he said, he's, I'm not going there. And he said, I'm not fucking with the Tweety Bird cup. Mm -hmm. I thought I saw, buddy. Yeah. Yeah, bad old buddy. That. I have to say... I was already like, because you have a lot to talk about. I mean, honestly, all I did was spy on your Facebook to get this information. So yeah, we're interview. going two days. I think you're going to have me on in a couple of weeks again. I'm sure we, we're not going to get into anything. We're just going to be laughing and talking shit. Dude. I'm, I'm a diverse guy. Yeah. Um, not in a bad way, but like, I, I so I went to the Bent Hour. Um, what's it called? I'm sorry. I got it right here. Uh, the Bent Elbow Hour. It's a podcast out here, right? And it's got a DJ on it. They they say it's a, a soul guy, a junk guy, and a fizzle guy or whatever. There's, but anyways, it was my buddy who's a DJ who's DJed some of my shit. And we're sitting there talking. And next thing you know, the whole interview went on about uh, the local hip-hop scene. Because mm. they didn't know I knew Nima, who's a local guy who sold 10K and got signed by Koch. They didn't know I was behind the stage for some... Like, I was in the midst of, like, when Macklemore was first coming out before he uh. came out. I'm talking about I met Macklemore when he was just Macklemore. That's awful. <laughs> Not when he met Ryan Lewis and blew up. Like I'm pretty sure he doesn't fucking know who Suit Man is. Now, I take that back. He might, because um, I didn't rap. I was the guy with the best weed in the back. <laughs> you know what I mean? And always, and like now, always cracking jokes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I remember we went to record with some guys in Tacoma. Um, fuck, I can't think of their names right now. But, oh, yeah, I can. Sweatbox Entertainment, my homeboy, Mr. Vaughn, and them guys, right? And we went down there, and they're all, you know, 6'3", 300-pound big dudes, right? And Nima's this little Persian dude, so he pulled up, and I'm with him, and I got the weed, and we all smoking. And I was like, just to let y'all know, it's it's not it's an even fight now if some shit go down. <laughs> they just looked at me as, I don't give a fuck if there's four of y'all. He got a big guy now. Trust me. And ever since that day, they were like, you're my guys? Yeah! Sure. Okay. All right. But that's you know what I mean. Like that's, I mean, I co like you said, I do stats. I've coached football. Yeah. I've I've coached semi pro. Um, I played semi pro football for twelve years. I've refed. Uh, what is it? Pro am basketball out here. I've refed with Sean Kemp's ex wife. I've played against Sean Kemp and some of the bullshit out here. I've seen Croft. You know what I mean? Like, there's not a circle of things that I don't do out here in the Pacific Northwest, and so. Like you gotta have this conversation. We ain't even talked about Soup Man yet. No, no, I'm gonna get to that. Actually, because you're throwing me so many uh, curveballs, I'm gonna throw a random thing at you because we're doing a future show on. Uh, I'm ready, bitch. You can't I know. That's why me. I'm gonna spin you off. I realize now. I he said, "I'm gonna try. Let's see if <laughs> I can make him hit the ditch." You're gonna Tiger Woods me, you son of a bitch. <laughs> we're doing a future topic. Uh, top five uh, favorite sitcoms for people growing up. 
Oh I'm yeah, I need that. you. What do you got? I need that. I need that. I need that. I need that. I got. I got. I, I got. I got an eclectic taste. If we go top five sitcoms, I'm bringing some shit out. I'm gonna hit you it. with some five top five of mine too. We'll see. Uh, you. Yeah, I'll be yeah. surprised. I need, I need on that show. Yeah, I'll take it. Sign uh, me up. Okay, Sign so I I grew up. Uh, believe it or not, I'm actually half Puerto Rican. Can't speak Spanish to save my life. I'm David Smith. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> White I'm not going there. Red allergies. Davido. 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 <laughs> Allergies, red oh, the le- well, the vino. You don't lie. Your name ain't David. It was dude, we, we grew up. Fun. My father, uh, we grew up like he brought me up on like Richard Pryor. So like favorite uh, sitcoms growing up were like Sanford and Son, uh, The Jeffersons, fucking Good Times, uh, All in the Family. Now that might be a little different because he was a racist motherfucker, but yeah, he was still one of my favorites anyway. Uh, fuck! Did wow. you just say I voted for Obama? No, I love like, Jesse Jackson, but I'm sad Rush Limbaugh died. Like you can't say those all in the same sentence. I mean, all in the same. Jefferson spit off. I mean, I see why they called you Pichi Weta your whole life. Yeah, I see what's up here. You don't speak Spanish, but you know what that means, don't you, buddy? <laughs> a few words I heard. <laughs> Pinche Roja, Roja Cabeza, redhead, right? I Did know. Have yeah, a red yeah, one too? <laughs> redhead, yeah. Sorry, my bad. We're giving Spanish lessons too. I'm never fucking gonna teach these guys. <laughs> hey, parlez-vous français? We can do a little French while we're at it. Shit, what's up? What up? So you're five cent. You're five cent cops now. I don't. I want to find out. So uh, okay. now. No. Yeah, sure. Throw, throw five at me. Whatever comes uh, to mind. Come on, man. That's another. Sh- I was trying to get a double booking. You All, right, we'll, we'll get you back. <laughs> okay. All right. So we got to talk about it. my five favorite sitcoms. I grew yeah. up with a white mom. Okay. In the late, in the early to mid eighties, right? And okay. so I didn't have cable TV. So for me, uh, uh, my five favorite sitcoms growing up mm-hmm. um, may not really be there. Because I didn't really have TV. I was homeless um, until about three or four in and out of bad living situations. And then in uh, apartments on like 3rd and Yesler and 9th and Madison, which you have no clue what that is. But that's literally downtown Seattle. Okay. I could throw rocks at the big buildings. Mm. I grew up in one of those neighborhoods with like TV wasn't that big. But when I think back, mine were like family matters. Okay. Um, Steve Urkel, you know what I mean? Mm Mm-hmm. Um, married with children, love so, and marriage. Classic. Horse and carriage. Horse and carriage. I tell you, right. Right. You got the whole song. You can't have one without the other. I don't know. But no, uh, I love that. Um, <laughs> The other one I really like, so we got family ties. We're going married with children. Got to go with the Cosby show. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Fuck everybody who's mad, whatever. I don't give a shit. Yeah, about well, was, yeah. Just like our he's, was, he's, a, he's a horrible person. but he's just fuck, a funny guy at the time, though. We didn't know. Both plays the shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. I hate R. Kelly, but that's where you know? <laughs> 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 I, I might have made a couple kids for that. Michael Jackson had some good shit, too. Hey, hey, fuck, <laughs> we're not going there. Jesus okay. Christ. We're just going to assassinate all our black artists while we're at it. <laughs> Talk about Chris Brown while we're at it. No. <laughs> Yeah, I like about you don't ever talk about Elvis and Jerry Lee Lewis and all this shit. You want to go, you son of a bitch. Let's Jerry go. Lewis, yeah, yeah. He was great yeah. balls of fire. He was doing yeah. some shit. <laughs> your 13 year old cousin, you pervert. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> shit, sorry, I digress. I love it. This didn't go anywhere with you, too. You got serious for a moment, too. We go from like talking about homeless and sad to I'm like fucking. <laughs> I'm yeah. Asperger's, dude. It's all over the place, and I'm not going to stop for emotion. You know what I mean? Like, I'm mm-hmm. over those emotions. You want to cry about me being homeless as a kid? No. That was 37 years ago. I cried a long time ago. Get over mm-hmm. it. Don't cry for me. <laughs> cry for somebody else. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, fuck. <laughs> so we said family matters. You see, I stay on topic. Family yeah. matters. Cosby show. <laughs> Married with children. Oh, yeah. Um, two more. Let's see what you got. <laughs> two more. <clears throat> I always like Roseanne because it reminded me white people were poor. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like they got shit on all the time and Mm -hmm. just dealing with shitty shit and being a mixed kid with a white mom living basically like white trash. It was like, oh, fuck white people. White people are poor too. Fuck yeah. Fuck. (laughs) You know what I mean? 
I don't know why you guys are calling us the N-word if you're just as poor as we are, but hey. <laughs> right? <And> then, <laughs> yeah, I get you canceled. Watch, watch what you turn mm. this on for. And Sorry. then last, last but not least, I would say Golden Girls. Ah, shit. Yeah, there you go. That's a good one right there. Right off the... Like, <laughs> I, I want to take Roseanne off just because she got canceled for being racist. You know what mm. I mean? So I got to find a different one. But I did watch a ton. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'd see The Simpsons. There we go. Oh, yeah. There you go. They were That'd right there with Mary with Children. Started yeah. around the same time. Yep. So yeah. I'd say Family Matters was Urkel, Cosby, Married with Children, The Simpsons, and The Golden Girls. Those were my five, like, as a kid. Yeah. And then I also liked um, some of the older shows. Like, I love The Odd Couple. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, perfect yeah. strangers, Balky. <laughs> Balky? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nobody talks about the perfect strangers, right? Yeah. I love Full Dude, House. Dance and Joy. Da, 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 da. Yeah. I love Full House growing up. <laughs> Dude, I just watched, I don't know if you're into this shit, but I watched uh, WandaVision. And um, what's her name? Is one of the Olsen. She's the, old, old, the younger sister. And I didn't know this, the one who plays Wanda. And I'm like, they had a sister? <laughs> Apparently they yeah, did. Yeah, they had it. They had. Elizabeth Olsen, though. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I'm, the WandaVision was a mind fuck. Oh, you, okay. You watched it then. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm Asperger's, right? Yeah. I pay attention to detail <clears throat> and I couldn't grasp the story. Mm. How- like it just took, you know what I mean? It was too slow. Like I tried to watch the four hour Justice League last night on oh. the, uh, on the uh, what do they call it? The HBO Max? No, the cracked out oh. website. You oh. know what I mean, when you're watching it for free. But, <laughs> You know, that. you got you click on it and it starts, and then the fucking ads pop up. I kind of want to watch club. that now. I'm paying for HBO Max. What the fuck am I doing? <laughs> Wasting fucking money. That's send what I'm me, doing. I, send I'm me the three dollars, <laughs> three dollars less a month, and I'll send you two websites that get you everything. Okay, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a hey, I'm a hustler, baby. <laughs> I just I want you to know, know. <laughs> it ain't where I've been, but where I'm about to go. That should be hey, that's man. Hold on, we about to start singing. We ain't even got into comedy. This is no. Awesome. I'm a. Uh, I'm gonna just jump in. I'm gonna last. Are dude. we romancing? Is this our first date? <laughs> this is my date. It went from calling me a stalker. You, to, you know what? I'm kind of digging, kind of digging you. <laughs> I heard he likes white Russians. That's <laughs> I'll get him. I'll perfect strangers. I like Why that. does my ass hurt every time I drink white Russians with Dave? Uh, we got. <laughs> we got to spin out this motherfucker. <laughs> Dude, I'm going to blow your spot up here a little bit, though, because you're throwing all this stuff out here. But if no one knows you, you're also a really good guy because I'm looking at this stuff you're just – I'm saying <laughs> The stuff you're doing here, like with uh, Suitman Productions, um, I mean, all right, you know what? I'm going to let you explain it because there's a lot here I haven't written down, but your words because you're obviously the – this is your passion, right? Come on. So uh, I, 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 I have a mission – the biggest thing is, is everybody asks me why I'm so different, what I did, what I'm doing, right? I'm applying all the business skills I learned. I have a master's in athletic administration, right? I'm applying all those ideals of running a business to comedy. Mm. So with that in mind, you got to think of marketing and, and product and exclusivity, right? And so my, I talk to people all the time, what's your 30-second commercial? I'm a business. I'm an LLC now. I just got my LLC. I'm looking to pull in sponsors and take the real money and give you a receipt and be legitimate, right? So when you do those things, you're supposed to be able to tell people in 25 seconds, right? What's your elevator pitch? All these different things, right? right, These are all business ideas that people aren't applying to comedy, right? And so I'll read to you my opening statement on my website. This is my 10-second commercial. Suitman Productions. Offering unique and diverse comedy shows, spotlighting minorities and those underrepresented within the entertainment industry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're like, fuck, what you say again? Say it again. I mean, There's a whole lot of big words in there. You know they're important? And they're important big words, so I'm just going to go, yeah, fuck yeah. That sounds good. I can't argue with it. Right? He said minorities, underrepresented people. I'm going to get canceled if I tell him that's bad. No, dude, fuck, I, I'm not, I look white. I know that. <laughs> Dave. Right? I hear you mean, Dave. I hear you, Dave. I hear you, Dave. Right? But let's go through that again, right? Offering unique and diverse 
comedy shows spotlighting minorities and those underrepresented within the entertainment yeah. industry. So I'll read through you. I'll just go through my website with you. Just read through it with you. Yeah. So my newest show, not my newest show, but my newest gym is called Dating with Trans with uh, Disabilities. Yep. It's the first transcontinental and full spectrum of disabilities podcast highlighting dating with people with those who either have with either or both physical and mental disabilities. All members of this podcast have a disability and discuss topics within the realm of dating. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> like what? So see, I, I did write all these down actually. So I was prepared. He Wait, said, I, I'm just reading my website. I didn't, you didn't even I, have to write them down. <laughs> dude, I, uh, I actually just, I can't, I can't even see it on your phone. I have it on your phone. Yeah, he said, yeah, yeah, I'm, I, I'm, 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 I'm reading it. I'm reading it. I was it. like, I'm just going <laughs> to. So you're doing truth. so much. Tell Don't truth, get man. a couple people out here to have like a couple years experience. Like I did stand up. You have like this whole resume. I'm like, <laughs> which is great. It's, impressive, it, it's not. That's the thing. Is like when you introduce me. If I tell people all the time, like I'm not a comedian, mm. and they're like, "Why do you say that? You're funny." I go, "Yeah, I'm fucking funny, but that's not why you're talking to me. Mm. You're not talking to me because I'm funny. You're talking to me because I'm soup man. Like mm. if all you saw was my comedy." And I didn't have all the other shit with Soup Man. Would it really be that impressive? Mm. Probably not, right? Yeah. And then when I talk about people, this cockiness that I have isn't for me. And so that's where I get a lot of haters is because I'm like, I'm fucking Soup Man, bitch. Do you not see what Soup Man's doing? But Soup Man isn't about Dante. So mm. when you talk about Soup Man, I really talk to people. Now I really get to talk for like a half hour, 45 minutes because I'm talking about all these other people I represent. And so the hater in a motherfucker really be like, this bitch won't shut up. I can't say nothing because he's not really talking about himself. He's talking about the people he rep. You know what I mean? That really irks motherfuckers. I feel like I'm talking to Batman. I'm enjoying yeah! it. Like Bruce Wayne's like, Bruce Wayne could be corrupted, but Batman can't. <laughs> Actually, yeah, exactly. No, right now I'm Dante. Right. And I throw on one of these 75 shirts. I mean, I'm suit man. And now you see I have OCD because you see, you can already tell there's a rainbow here and the color is sorted. That's all we'll do. We'll just close that. We'll go ahead and close that because if you can already tell the sweatshirts are like that too, I've got a problem. I've got an issue. I've got. And then I'll show you this just for you guys out there. Uh, this is a hamper full of ties. Oh, shit. <laughs> I've got 150 fucking ties. <laughs> My man, <laughs> this is a, yeah. When I get dressed, it's a whole, it's a whole. Uh, what's the word? Uh, event? Ordeal. Uh, yeah, event. ordeal. <laughs> Coordination, right? Uh, <laughs> but it's also that's what I've I've become. Like I, I don't know if you saw me post. I was feeling like I was depressed the other day, mm. and somebody was like, "Why are you depressed? You just went to D.C. and you met John Legend, and he said suit man, and then you went to Boston." Mm -hmm killed the black comedy festival in portland and you drove all the way around california for six days and you did three different cities and you did all these things yeah now i'm doing nothing <laughs> i've been dante for the last week and a half just sitting uh, at home like clark kent like nobody needs superman huh i guess i guess i'll just be clark kent and wear these glasses and let people talk shit to me like i'm a regular person and, <laughs> but at the same point I was like, it's a humble brag at that point. Mm. I'm not depressed. I'm just going on the lows of having three amazing fucking weeks. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. So it's like, <laughs> yeah, you're having these highs, highs. Eventually, you have to have some lows. Yeah. What the fuck? Like, you gotta, you gotta date three ugly ones to get to the fifty good <laughs> ones. I've right. been to deja vu. Okay, I know how this works. <laughs> hey, every fucking day can't be a slam dunk, right? Yeah. Otherwise, no. You would no. appreciate it. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta get a couple twos, man. Hey, if you can't get a ten, get five twos. That's what my grandpa told me. Or two fives. I aim for the fours myself, but that's fine. How do you well, get two I, and a half people? How do you well, get two and a half? I find you can stack up the fours, though. It's great. You know, it's not as much work. You misogynistic bastard! I'm I telling everybody, you're canceled. That's canceled. it. Now we got done. him. <laughs> Send it out. Science will deliver. <laughs> But that's the thing is like when you when you talk to people, right, and you're looking at doing stuff, like what are you I'm this has been a great conversation. Thank you. You you pumped me up. I needed this. Um <laughs> but this is the thing, like I uh, and I kid you not, it's conversations like this, it's having fun, it's finding somebody who believes in what you're doing, finding mm. those new fans, finding those new people that like really care about what you're doing yeah. and energize you and remind you, hey, this is why you do this. Hey, you are like you said. 
I feel like I'm talking to a super dude. Hero. I uh, I'm curious to get your input on this too. We started. I was telling you off. I like this is like a pro wrestling podcast, and then we were interested in comedy, so we started doing comedy. Well, as we started doing the comedy, of course, we get more work to do. Somebody who liked our pro wrestling podcast invited us to do commentary for this pro wrestling thing down in Florida. And now we got invited to do this live show. And I'm thinking about the time to tell somebody, it's like, sometimes you don't plan on this shit, but opportunity leads to other opportunities. And then it's like, you're stupid if you just don't not take advantage of this stuff, I think. So I'm glad you said that. I got goosebumps when you said that. I wish I could show you. Um, <laughs> but I probably could. That's all right. <laughs> Oh, wait, here we go. Oh, look, my hair's standing oh, my on my arm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I wasn't joking. I got so, Batman goosebumps. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm a real emotional teddy bear. Um, I'm just Same. also a grizzly hey, bear. Just, you don't know, you gotta know me. Like, am I going to touch that bear? That bear looks mad. <laughs> He's sad, but he looks mad. It's the same. I'm not talking with that bear. I'm just not. I don't know the bear. Dude, but, I don't know about you, too. Not to get, the older I get, too, like, I get more emotional. Like, I'm in my oh. 40s now. Like, I start watching, like, some sad movie. I'm like, oh, oh you're no bitch. Yeah, yeah. I'm only 39. I'm not there yet. I'm not over yeah, there. I'm 44. Don't me in that club. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Just because I've got Crohn's and three bad replaced joints don't make that. It does make me about 56. Anyways, but no, you're right. It's I yeah. went through a bad divorce. I'm not seeing my kids. I have PTSD, anxiety, Asperger's. Uh, and I've, I've got a little bit of it all. So yeah, I'm a fucking crying mess. Like I watched Rava the other night and cried my eyes out. Mm. <laughs> any any Disney movie, parentish, yeah. like I remember when my mom died and I was still married and my daughter made me go watch Coco. Oh, that's hot. Oh, Coco. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, fuck, fuck her. I got pissed. <laughs> she kept talking to me about my mom and I'd look at her I mean, I don't want to talk about my mom. Clear mm. fucking gangster. She looked at me and she's like, that's my grandma too. Was, oh, oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Just, we're going to see Coco. And I, was, I don't want to go. She says, I'll hold your hand when you cry, Daddy. Uh-huh. Oh, man. <laughs> Brutal. And I cried. She held my hand. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? I, yeah, I can't. Fuck, I'm crying now. You said it. I was, dude, I was I so sad as fuck. I cried by myself. That you know, I didn't have to hold my hand. I, I cried the other night watching Rollo <laughs> by myself. But, but I'm losing like, good tears. I'm laughing while I'm saying it, right? But, uh, you know, fuck you. You son of a bitch. Man. Superman. You son of a bitch. Suck about Superman. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> This is my first time. <laughs> oh. Oh, that brought it back. <laughs> you made me cry, you son of a bitch. You were I'm about to a gamut of emotions here. <laughs> I, I am all over the place. I told you, I, 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 I keep it all in, right? So what we're we fucking saying? Oh shit! How do you? All right, I'm just. I'm just oh, I know this. we're. I know we're at. I got you. I got okay, you. Okay, go ahead. So I started doing comedy because um, my mom died. And I always wanted to do comedy, and um, so I started. And then my marriage fell apart. And I got thrown out of my house, and I was sleeping in my car, and I was doing it like every day, right? Mm. And for six weeks straight, I was doing it. And so I decided to do a show. I was going to produce a show to get some donations to fight for my kids. Okay. Wow. And my first show's name was Make Dante Dad Again. Wow. Uh. Holy shit, bro. <laughs> so I've been doing my names and my, you get what I mean, from the first fucking show. And this was, yeah. I started comedy in August. I decided to plan a show in October and I did it on Black Friday. Okay. Make Dante dad again. Real teal jerker, right? The day after Thanksgiving, get people. Uh-huh. So I, this is already how my mind worked before I knew I was going to be a producer, right? And so I put 25 people on the show, five minutes a piece. I slated the show to start um, with seven-minute integrals, so that way, even though they had five minutes, I knew that I'd get a minute off in seven. And guess what? The show ran on time. Nice. <laughs> and all 25 people showed up, and then they'd be like, when am I on? I said, bitch, I said 8.17. It's 8.12. You'll be on in five minutes. Wow. <laughs> hey, hey, what time am I on? Bitch, it says 9.47. It's 8.50 right now. We're running on time. You'll be on at 9.47. And they just kind of looked at me and I was what the fuck's the issue? Mm -hmm. I've got OCD, right? Right, right. I've got anxiety, right? I've Asperger's. So I think I plan everything. I used to have yeah. spreadsheets for my fucking vacations, right? <laughs> Some things are optional. Not everything's optional on that fucking schedule. You want to come on vacation with me? Better read the fucking spreadsheet. Sorry. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> There's a fucking itinerary. We're supposed yeah. to 
old factory. What the fuck are you doing? Wake up! But uh, <laughs> so I got done with the show, and everybody was like, "Uh, one guy who was helping me, I was like, hey, man, I think I want to do this again. And he's like, oh, you can do it again, but not here. Mm. What? Is this my club? And that was the first time I got shut down and found out I was a threat to somebody because they still fucking hate me to this day. And uh, the other people were like, you ran a show with 25 people, had no issues, and it ran on time. Are you fucking kidding me? Nobody does that. And I didn't didn't care, didn't know. Right. And so I think you'll understand this one. As a comedian, you hit a wall in your first year or two, sometimes three. And what I mean by that is when you go from being the new kid to a comedian. Do you know what I mean by that? Mm. Because when you're the new kid and you're not that funny, everybody likes you. Yeah. When you get a little funny and you start turning into a comedian, you find out who don't like you. <laughs> right, 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 you go right, to right. mics and certain people don't want to laugh and you're like, the audience is fucking laughing. Why aren't you guys laughing? Like the five people here to see comedy are fucking laughing at me. You guys mm. are sitting there staring at me like I'm an asshole. Gotcha. Yeah. And so I hit that. I, I know what you mean. Yeah, that mentality was foreign to me for a little while. I actually found that out like going back to my first job. Like my very first job, I remember like I was working hard and I got a little uh, extra money that gave me a raise. And I remember I made the mistake of telling people like everybody's just gonna be so fucking happy for me. Like, hey guys, I made extra money. I'm like, why did you make extra money? I'm like, they're like oh, you. Fuck. Yeah. Got a raise? Yeah. That's how that goes. Hold on, Dave. Dave, I've been here three years longer than you. Right. I work way better. <laughs> I show up early and I do Saturdays and I've got my nose all the way up John's ass over there. Right. You got a raise? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Great. Yeah. <laughs> and they didn't say all that, but they did give you no, the... No, that's, that's... They gave right. you the... Yeah. Great. Yeah. And you were like, Great? Fuck you! Like, I heard what you really said. Like, I heard <laughs> You're right. There's a big mentality of people who are just like, why not me? Or, you know, that mentality. That's just... Bingo. Right? Yeah. No, I was falling into that, right? I was at year, I was at month three or four. Really wasn't that good, but I was funny. I had, I, I, I mean, there's a difference between who I am now as a comedian, right, and who I was two years ago. I've got twenty to twenty-five minutes of material. I think uh, three or four or five of it is still that original material because it was that good when I wrote it, mm -hmm. right? But my delivery is better the way I'd incorporate around other jokes. Now, I had three or four minutes of material, but none of it was together. It was just different shit. Now there's stuff that goes around the stuff I did originally, right? But my, my point was, is I, I went down to the... I hit that wall in December of that year. And I just started to notice everybody was getting shows, and you get three to four to five months in, or you get some success. And the other part I have to re remind people of is it's not about how much time you've done. It's about how many stages you've done. Mm. What I mean by that is my first six months, I was doing two to three, my, six weeks, I was doing two to three mic, mics every night because I was homeless, there was nothing else to do, and all I, could, I could drive around and do these mics and not eat and not, you know what I mean, <clears throat> keep myself busy and just yeah. do whatever. And then when I started 2019, I was doing more than a mic a day. So they got, I had hit like day 90 and I was like, yeah, mic 100. When you're getting that many at bats and seeing so many different people and, and trying your jokes so many different mm -hmm. times, that'll take you leaps and bounds above the person that says, I've been doing comedy for three years, but I only go to the same spot once right. a, or once a quarter. And so I, I tell people to be careful about judging people off their years if their years aren't getting them at bats. If you played in the majors for 20 mm -hmm. years and you only got 17 at bats, are you a home run hitter? Right. No. Yeah. If you played three years and you had 122 home runs, are you a home run hitter? You fuck you are, right? Mm -hmm. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, yeah. Total different thing, right? I think put in perspective for people, too. Like, you can be a big deal in your small hometown, but that doesn't mean it's going to translate everywhere. You need to go out and prove yourself again sometimes. And then you could, be a, you could be a small deal in this huge town and get on the road <laughs> and find out, Oh shit! I'm fucking fun. Fuck these guys, right? That's, <laughs> right. <laughs> right? That's right, what, right, right. That's what right. happened to me. I mean, I knew I was good, but I went down to Portland for the first Black Comedy Festival. Their third, but my first Black Comedy Festival in 2020 or 19, and crushed it on my first night. Crushed it when I came back, and all these black comics were like, "Hey, you've been doing comedy for what, like four or five years?" And I was like, "No, six months." Wow. <laughs> and they were like, "What?" <laughs> 
yeah, six months. And they're like, fuck, hey, keep doing it. And I came back. I was like, I want to do a black comedy show. And this is where it changed. Like, we, this was the whole idea was like, do you ever start something and find out it's taking you somewhere you weren't going to be? Right. And right. this was the point of this is that. So I come back and I'm like, I looked at all my young black comedians that were all, you know, two or three years younger and were all open micers, not really getting no chances. And I was like, we need to do a fucking black comedy show. They were like, yeah. And I was like, we're going to go get like laughs or the underground or the parlor, one of our big clubs and go do it there. And I'm going to ask them. And they looked at me and they're like, huh. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> right? And I was like, nah, nah, I got all this gumption. We're going to go fucking do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're like, sure. We're going to go look at some regular places we can do comedy, <laughs> and we'll get you one of those. But you can try the big ones. So I went to uh, Laughs and asked them. And they're like, yeah, fuck it. We'll give you the Thursday before Memorial Day. Yeah. That's not a good day. Oh. <laughs> Thursday before a three day weekend. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be crap, right? <laughs> most black people, like we always do, we made chitlins out of, out, of, out of entrails, right? And most of our, <laughs> you get, you give me chicken shit, I'm making chicken salad. And I didn't know any better. I got a night at a real club. We had over 100 people show up on a Thursday. Mm. They cut me a check for $1,100 that oh, night. Nice. <laughs> do you know what that means? Nobody gets to cut a check for $1,100 for one yeah. night comedy are you kidding no. and this was my first soup man show dude i'm interviewing people tons of comedians if you, you know, episodes, i got paid a beer uh <laughs> I got, you know, yeah so i got no. drink tickets right <laughs> yeah and then here was the worst part so then i i, I had animosity from people because then i told everybody so i went to laughs and i said hey i want to do this again and the fucked up part is like three weeks before the show is hey i got some other ideas and they're like yeah you haven't sold any tickets yet I was like, yeah, but it's a black comedy show. It's good. Black people don't buy shit early. Right? And then I came by the next week. I was like, hey, I want to do the show called Def Con. We've only sold total tickets. Let's see how the show goes. Just shut me down. Mm. And then the night of, we had 58. And then before showing, we had 88. And then we had over 100 people in the room. And they cut me a check for $1,100 without any metrics on why that's what they were paying me. Wow. So do you think they paid me enough or just enough to shut me up? Right, right, right. Because on a Thursday, you were so busy that you couldn't keep up? Yeah. You had 120 fucking people on a Thursday? Mm. And I didn't do $5 tickets. Tickets were $15 pre-sale, 20 at the door. Unlike You're most a stat companies, man, too. I don't, I don't <laughs> discount my shit. Again, yeah. I'm the stat guy. All right, all right. <laughs> You're putting this together. <laughs> Right, 15 times 80, that's 1,200 right there. And then the other 40 people got in by 20, that's another 800. So you got two grand Bond at drinks. the door. <laughs> you got two grand at the door. It's two drink minimum. Yeah. <laughs> and it was a two-hour show. Nobody left. It was a two-and-a-half-hour show. Nobody left. Mm. Think about that. Nobody yeah. left. And so I went to... I went to um, <coughs> Columbia City Theater, and because they were like, we don't. I mean, maybe we'll do another black show with you. We'll see. Mm -hmm. And I was insulted. As we'll see, mm -hmm. and, you know, I went bragging. And do you know what the people in the comedy scene said? Well, you know, Hannibal Burris and Ellen got paid more than that. Jesus Christ! <laughs> I I can literally remember somebody telling me that shit, and I was like, Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> Like you're comparing me to the I I appreciate right. these fucking comparison. But that's how you're gonna knock my dick in the dirt. <laughs> Fuck you. you know what I'm saying? So I had this idea for doing a deaf show. Yes, doing comedy for deaf people. I was gonna ask you that because I love the name deaf comedy. And I'm uh, I'm yeah. deaf in my left ear. I had my ear, my stapes removed, right, or replaced. So I'm partial deaf, right. And so I don't hear everything. And if you notice, I mumble a little bit and I don't enunciate the best because I people say I say soup man and I say suit man. But it's soup man and suit man sound the same out of my mouth because I don't enunciate enough. So if I said suit man, you'd get it. But since I say suit man, everybody thinks, oh, so suit man. There's no suit man. They're like suit man and suit man. They both sound the same. I hear it now. But to me, I'm saying something totally fucking different. Fuck. Anyway, so I digress. So I emailed them and I was like, hey, I got this show I want to do. Um, I want to do the show called Deaf Comedy Jam. And then I've got my show Dark Brew. And then I want to do this mom show. And I've got a couple other ideas if you'd give me a chance to talk. And they literally emailed back. We're like, you want to do a show for deaf people? Mm, the yeah. fuck? In my 19 years of entertainment, nobody's ever emailed me on that. We got to talk. <laughs> and I came in and told them about Deaf Comedy Jam. And I was like, yeah, I do Dark Brew and want to do these things. Just, All right. 
And then he, we're sitting upstairs, and I'm looking at the calendar and the computer with him. I was like, okay, can I get that date? And then can I get that? And he looked at me and goes, you know, I probably shouldn't be so showing you the actual calendar. Can you look that way? But I'll give you those dates. And I, we had 65 people at the first Deaf Comedy Jam, 45 nice. of which identified as deaf because you got a cheaper ticket. If you were deaf, I charged deaf people less to go to the show. Hmm. And the I uh, paid for cart captioning, and I, I didn't make that much money off of it. I think by the time it was done, I made like – couple hundred dollars right but i paid three hundred dollars for the asl interpreters i paid two hundred dollars for the cart captioning you you can see a picture where there's the guy doing the the joke there's the woman signing next to him and you can see the the joke on the screen like it was and then you got two jokes laughs for one as a comedian which was huge and then there was this deaf guy whose laugh was ah, ah, ah. so after about the third comedian i went up there and i was like who's the one who keeps going ah, ah, ah. And he raised his hand. I was like, I got to charge you more, dude. You're laughing on every joke. You're getting more than your money's worth. Right? <laughs> and then it was just awesome. Like, there's... Well, I'm getting chills again. Yeah. When you walked in pre-show, it was dead quiet. Mm. And you thought it was empty because you'd never run on deaf people. Right. The pizzeria next door gave me pizza every time I did a show because they did $2,500 in business that day. Oh, wow. Usually on uh, the day it was, it was I think it was the Sunday. It was the first Sun, the Sunday of Labor Day weekend, right? Usually on a Sunday they did like eight hundred. Mm. And then I had warned them, deaf people wow. are coming in. Deaf people are coming in, you know. They're and so people they'd be like hi, and they would scribble on their notepad. And, I'm deaf, and they were like, oh fuck. And then when you do a deaf show, you can see the impact because they're not used to getting deaf customers. Yeah. And so it and then. <clears throat> That like I get tears. Everybody gets, in, but but this is what I do. This is what all the shows I do are about: is is mm. is representation and bringing out a group that you're not seeing. Mm. And and I've just taken that and doubled down and tripled down and quadrupled down on it every yeah. time I do a new show. My newest show that's not even on my website yet, but I've got the lineup for it. It's called the SSI Show. It's the Social Security Influencers. Ooh. Yeah, a whole bunch of senior citizens doing Please. comedy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they are, right? They're social security influencers. I right? love it. <laughs> right? But it's a whole bunch of old people. It'll be, on, it'll be about noon, right? On a Friday. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Early bird special. <laughs> right? Right before nap time. Right, <laughs> right. right before supper. <laughs> right, I'm an asshole for some of this shit, but. That's There's great. so much truth in it. Like I, we decided to do autistic artists, right? Mm -hmm. And it's the autistic is the combination of autistic and fantastic, right? Yeah. And um, here's the shitty part: is I didn't know I was Asperger's till about seven months ago. Okay. Wow. I'm self-diagnosed, but I've always known I was weird. I was always mm -hmm. in a special classroom. I was always in, you know what I mean, something, right? And what I mean by that is I, I I started off in kindergarten and then they put me in first grade. And then for first grade, I went to second grade. And all of first and second grade, I was in a special room with my aunt, who was a teacher there, and two other Asian kids. And we were doing cursive and fractions as kindergartners and first graders. Hmm. Then they sent me to the IPP school, right? And I, I was in a portable part of the day. And when I got to a point where I was too big and fighting... I'd go to a portable not because I was uh, in trouble or because my grades were bad, but because I was bored. Mm. Now, I didn't know that as a kid that that meant I was Asperger's and I was poor and my mom was alcoholic and shit was bad, right? right. And then by the time I got old enough to get into school, you get to middle school, I was taking algebra in seventh grade. And I wasn't taking it in seventh grade the first time. I think that was the third or fourth time I'd taken algebra because I'd been mm. taking algebra all elementary school. <laughs> I can tell you what 3x plus 4 equals 13 and what x is since I was a kid. It just made sense to me. Some of these things, the patterns. I can see where you wouldn't have got along with some of your teachers, though. Because, like, you're self-assured and you're such a stack guy and you know these numbers and everything. It's like you're going to rub people the wrong way, obviously, at times. But it's 30, Not intentionally. It's 45. It's 45. It's 45. Right. It's 45. Somebody <laughs> listen to me and said it's 45. <laughs> <laughs> And then I've been 5'11 since I was 11 years old. Mm. I used to scare teachers. But I, I've had security called on me just for getting mad as a kid. Well, I'm 5'9 and 140 pounds at 9 years old. Like, uh, 
I fuck up a teacher if I get mad, but I right. wouldn't. You know what I mean? Right. But my whole life, I knew these things, and so my friend asked me. It, it was weird because my mind is a. Uh, I'm good at problem solving. I'm a stats guy. I'm also an engineer. Engineer mind. So uh, I deconstruct things. So if you give me an idea, I'll break it down. So I love problem solving. So if you tell me you want to do a show, great, cool. When do you want to do it? What time? What are you thinking? What's your budget? What's your parameters? You answer those five questions, and I'll give you the whole show theme and what we're doing and who we're doing it with. And how no look at me. How the fuck did you do that? I'm a fucking computer. <laughs> it works that way. I just need my five inputs. Run it through an equation. Here's your answer, right? And so we talked about doing the show. She said, I want to do something with autistic people. And she said, we're going to do a Zoom to talk about us. Okay. Well, what are we going to talk about the Zoom? Well, what do you want to do? So, okay. I said, well. I already got an idea. Why don't we interview autistic artists? She's like, what do you mean? I was like, well, won't we interview like autistic comedians and musicians and all this and talk about their... And she's, oh, fuck, that's a great idea. Hmm. And then we told my local lady about it. And she was like, yeah, I'm autistic too. And it's what? Hmm. Wow. And then I talked about I have radar. And people don't like that term, but we could call it ODAR oh. if you want or NURDAR. But I've always got along with people who are special. Yeah, because I'm special, and I didn't know it, right? But I've always been able to look around, and be like, "Hey, how you doing?" And I'm a bully's bully. I've always hung out with the weirdos, and the because because of this, and I didn't know what it was. But now looking back, I've been mm-hmm. Asperger's this whole time. I can't right. sit at the table with cool people because I don't fucking understand them. But I look cool. I'm a nerd. I'm a jock, right? So it's like, hey, he fits in. Ah, eh, not really. <laughs> and when we started this show, the friend that was the friend that wanted to do the show went to high school with me. And so we're having this conversation, and she goes, yeah, Dante's, you're Asperger's, right? Was, what? Well, she's like, well, I mean, I've known you since high school. I always thought you were a little off. You didn't know that? Was, oh, no. We're not going to try again on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> then I, then I, I identify a lot with Sheldon from uh, Big Bang. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Sheldon's fucking Asperger. <laughs> yes! <laughs> okay, then. Hold up. We'll go back to Exhibit A. Did we see my shirt? <laughs> Did, we see- <laughs> Did you see my shirt? I should show you my book. The ties. Like- <laughs> Shut the ties. Fucking organized. <laughs> Even my messes are organized. You know what I mean? Ooh. Like I piled my clothes in a mess, but they're grouped by what pile is supposed to be put away where. Mm. And so it was one of these things where you just, you find these people and you find these voices and then like with some of the other, like mixed and misidentified, the what are you show? We get, um, I usually have like 18 to 20 different flags on the show because we put the flags of all the nationalities that you're mixed with. Oh, okay. Yeah. And when we did that live in Seattle, you know, you think mixed and misidentified, and you think of me, right? Black, white, that's only mixed, but we got white and Puerto Ricans like you. We got Asian and Asian, and the biggest amount, we had 100 people at it. I'd say 70% of them were Asian. Because there's a high multicultural Asian population. They're not all just Japanese. Usually they're right. Japanese and Chinese or Japanese and Korean or Vietnamese and Thai. And so the idea of being mixed and misidentified is a universal idea and one that hasn't been tapped into, right? Right, right, right. And somehow I just keep coming up with all these ideas that for some reason nobody's doing. Like yeah, black- it's like you're going after these good causes, but you're also taking a businessman approach to this as well, too. Like no one's done this. And you're like, let's break it down. How are we going to do this? Okay, yeah. <laughs> Which is oh, normal uh, to you. Yeah, Which, it's, yeah right. it's marketing. That's yeah. demographics, right? right. Yeah. But the long, term, the long term is, and I talked to somebody about this, was, when I go to have that conversation about sponsorship or talk to a business, mm. why do you want to be a part of Soup Man? Well, let me ask you, Mr. Customer, Mr. Business Owner, um, where are you spending advertising dollars that show you support in di- um, diverse communities and minorities? And not only that, but you know you're reaching those same communities as well. Wow. <laughs> you ain't got nothing. You just said, yeah. wow, sign me up. Here's my sign check. <laughs> I'm sorry, right? Like, fuck you. Whatever. Take whatever you want. I don't want to get canceled. It sounds awesome. <laughs> And then that's the thing is like, you know, I, I, I'm not a perfect person. I have my indiscretions. I fuck up, but I'm getting better at being a better person, right? So as long as I yes. keep being a better person and working ethically, there's no limit to the people you can work with, right? Yeah. 
like we i've i've been doing comedy for three years I almost no two and a half years producing for mostly two right and i've done four donation shows to, to the ugm right i've already incorporated into my brand my product and my process to do a donation show so when i blow up is it going to be hard to do this donation show or are we just doing give love laugh 15 mm. do you get what i mean like yeah and those are the things, like, I've talked to people, like, there's so much stuff. Like you said, th this was all a conversation about where you start and where you end up. Yeah. Uh, I'm supposed You're making to me think, bro. That's why I'm like, man, it's got <laughs> Everybody I talk to, when we have this real conversation about yeah. Superman, like, it's a movement. Like, I'm yeah. trying to think, like, when I went to D.C. and I, 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 I John Legend, I, I'm recording on fucking this by the White House, and John Legend comes out and I said, hey, John Legend, check out Superman Comedy. And he goes, Superman comedy? I said, no, suit and tie. Superman comedy. He goes, okay, suit man. I got a 37 clip of that interaction with me and John Legend. You can't pay for that. No, no. And then it was know. a crowdfunded trip. I told everybody I was going to inauguration. I wanted to go, so I raised $600 to get there. That covered my room, my airfare, everything that needed to be there. Right now, did I still have to pay for my food, my drinks, my weed? Yeah, I would have done that at home, of course, right? But I, I raised enough to get there and cover this for people. Right. And then that was only because I was in the middle of the Seattle riots. If you did my YouTube channel, you saw the hectic footage from the Seattle riots. You mm. saw I was in the middle of that fucking shit. And my voice went viral during that because I was the guy yelling at the Seattle police officer to take his knee off his fucking neck when he had his knee on the dude in the orange shirt's neck in Seattle during our George Floyd riots. So my voice already went, you know what I mean? Like people, and the more you're doing. I can talk all day about what I'm trying to do because I have a passion and it's yeah. not about me. I don't, we still haven't talked about how funny I am, right? No, no. Dude, I only got like 10 more minutes. I got to tell you, <laughs> that's all right. I was like, he said, yeah. we got to roll up in 10 minutes. I told you, I'd be back, right? <laughs> yeah, we will have you back, man. You got so <laughs> we got to work out a two hour schedule next time. God damn, son. <laughs> Maybe just once a month we have the soup man soiree and I come in, we talk some shit. I love but it. This is, this is the whole idea is that. My passion is beyond what what is me. Right. And this is good. So when I went to DC and that was where I was going with this, I, I met up with my friend Danny and we were having a good time. And Danny D is a comic out of Sacramento and she's jumped on the Suitman gang and we, we're saying Walrus Gang. That's another, you know. And what Suitman really does is I'm a networker and I build all these groups of people that we come together, but they're all under the Suitman umbrella. And so when we all get together, if you get somebody that's sent to you from Suitman, that's family. Whether you fucking know them or not, you know how I treat people. You know how people mm. treat me. So you're going to know that's family. Nobody's done that. I'm trying to take over comedy in a different way. I don't want to. I want you to go get a club and run it yourself and say, hey, Dante, I need some more diverse shows. And I go, great, cool. You're going to run black and proud. You're going to give me 10% of the door and you're going to keep the rest. You're going to pay my logo lady. I've, here's your lineup. Here's your host. And they know what to do. They're going to look at me. Okay. Wow. Why do I need to go out my box? You want to book all black women show? Great. We're sending your Soul Sister Sundays. Yeah. The Soul Sister Sunday, the Soul Sister Showcase, right? I call it Soul Sister Sundays because we do it on Sundays, but it'll be the Soul Sister Showcase, right? And I'll send you six black women, and I'll send one of them's going to host, and you've got the whole lineup, and all you got to do is sell tickets. Perfect. Yeah. You, just, right? you got shows, you got ready made shows for these people. The flyers are already made. Yeah. The the branding's already out there, right? Then I don't have to be there. Mm -hmm. And then people know what expectations I have and what I want. And then it's not even about me at this point. It's about selling the idea of getting more of them on stage. Right. And I don't charge them anything. I'm not asking for a booking fee. I give people a ton of bookings without getting a five dollar, five, ten, fifteen percent. But then that's the other part of people. Somebody asked me, Why aren't you a manager? I had two or three comics that were like, yeah, whenever you decide to start being a manager, let me know. Hmm. Because I've got the spreadsheets and there's a process. Yeah. To make a Google form for everything. And so, you know, I talked to my friend and I was like, I really, and she was like, uh, I believe you. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like the, I had this talk the other day. It, it's my mindset has changed. When you're, when you're good or you're, you're great at something, you don't always know it. Right. Right. 
and so like uh, we we had this matriculation of me growing up as a producer we've talked about it make dante dad again i had this great slogan didn't know it ran it on time ran this perfect show and raised 350 bucks nobody does that their first show right then my first real show it basically sells out i get an 1100 dollars check and we do black comedy on a thursday before a three-day weekend and fucking crush nobody does that right then you're telling me your first official show where you got a home was deaf comedy jam where you translated comedy for deaf people nobody does that right then you sold out your next show with 135 people you sold out your third fucking show at a theater again nobody does that and then I remember I was complaining to my friend right before COVID hit, right? Because we were shutting down, and it was last February, and I was like, man, I'm only averaging 80 people a show at Columbia City Theater, and man, I should be selling out, and I'm missing out on 50 people a show. <laughs> you know what she said to me? She was like, bitch, there's clubs that don't even hold 80 people. What are you, <laughs> what are you complaining about? Poor me. <laughs> yeah, right? And all these things sound like a humble brag, but when you're you're not – I don't know what I'm doing here. Right. I don't know the limitations. I'm treating this like business, and it's not so much yeah. I don't know what I'm doing here, but I don't know the restrictions. I don't know why right. I should have to wait five years to do a – fuck you. I don't want to wait. Mm -hmm. Give me a club. Give me a lineup. Let's, let's diversify. That's the that. best. That's and the so best, right? Right. I'm not even doing comedy the, the, the traditional way. I don't really do three people on a show. I usually do a minimum of five to six. Nobody ever really does more than about 20 or 25 minutes on one of my shows. I like it, though. Don't even check what other people are doing. Just do your thing, right? And that's what's working. I mean, shit. <laughs> and it's it's been it's been amazing, but that's where it uh it all changed. Because when you first, you're just doing it, right? And then you're you're doing it subconsciously, and then you start doing it on purpose, right? And then now I'm doing it with conviction. Yeah, right. You're starting to own it. Yeah, and it's it's a you can hear it in the tone of my voice. It's not a cockiness. It's, this is who Suitman is. What you want right. to talk about? What I'm doing? I got nine different fucking shows. They're all different. I'm not fucking bragging. It's the truth. Go read. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people that'll piss them off, but to the right people, it's, well, fuck, dude, you. You've earned that. High five. <laughs> greatest, <laughs> greatest characters, they say, are extension of oneself. It's just you turned up with the dial up a couple notches. I've always heard. So, <laughs> and, the, and you know, it's 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 uh, it's different. Mm -hmm. Like I've had to understand. I'm going to be on a pedestal. I'm going to be scrutinized. I'm going to get haters. I'm going to yeah. have the people. You don't book white guys, huh? No, <laughs> not really. You can go to any club and see white guys. If you're mad at me, Dave, because I'm not giving you stage time, you're a fucking idiot. You don't get it. All right. <laughs> you don't get it. You just don't get it. Like, you could it, it, guess what? I won't charge you to come to the shows if you want to support, but no, I'm not putting you on the fucking stage. I'll go to laughs, and you have a better chance of getting on stage at laughs than anybody on this fucking lineup. Why do I need to give you stage time? Right. Right. And I, that's the. That's the fight I have every day. Mm. And and the more I keep having the fight, the more that means I'm doing it right. Oh yeah. The more that I have these 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 people, oh my god, fucking suit man. The more that that happens, there's more people that come out and go, "Yeah, fucking suit man." <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, the more haters you do something right. <laughs> yeah, the more haters I get though, the more people that are like, you know, cuz it's fuck that guy is totally different than fuck that guy. <laughs> Dante, See the on, on, on emphasis, you know what I mean. Dante, and, uh, I gotta wrap this up. So, but um, anything you want to promote, man? You've been awesome. I, I don't want to. I even hate ending it. But what do you got? Anything you want coming up? Just tell us, man. I want to hit you. Okay, you so my biggest thing tomorrow, we're doing our show. Give love, laugh. It's a donation show for Un Union Gospel Mission. Uh, my headliner for that show is actually Derek Sheen. Which is huge news. He opens for Brian Posehn all the time and goes on tour. Like he's a phenomenal fucking comic. So to even have him on one of my shows, and then he's like me. His his the Union Gospel saved his life. It's a homeless shelter. It's helped him. It's it. We're not doing tickets. It's live on Facebook. We're posting, okay. you know, the link to do donations the whole time. I'm not trying to make any money. It's just trying to make people laugh. We'll share that. Then, awesome. Sunday we've got Autastic Artist, which is our we interview a uh, artist. We've got Emma Blue Emma Roberts. She runs Blue Glasses Girls out of um, England, right? 
She also partners with us on our Dating with Disability show. But the biggest thing about that one is she's a coach, a consultant, all kinds of shit. You know what I mean? And it's just, I think the biggest thing about that show is people, like I ran into somebody yesterday who talked about it. And they're like, yeah, my nephew just got diagnosed with autism and his mom's all stressed out. And Why? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so he's going to be good in math. He's going to be socially awkward. He's mm-hmm. probably not going to be running around fucking a whole lot of bitches. Um, yeah. <laughs> he's going to be a manageable child. Oh, right, darn. Right. Yeah. He's socially popular. I'm yeah. sorry that hurts your fucking ego as a, as a parent, right? But as you know what I mean? You're like, right. With the breakdown of it. Yeah, you're yeah, right. And that's <laughs> he's gonna, that's yeah. the funny part about our that, that podcast is it usually starts, it's a roller coaster of emotions like me because you talk about this anger and frustration that people have before they're diagnosed because people are just like, you're weird. And then when you tell them, oh, you're just autistic. Okay, that makes sense. Mm. Which is a letdown to the average person, but to the person with a disability, now you get treated differently, which is okay, but it's also not okay because autism isn't a big fucking deal. I'm fucking okay. You're the yeah. asshole. Right, right. Now so let me know what I'm coming yeah. back on so we can talk about some of this other stuff. Oh, um, how about uh, social media? Anything you want to Twitter, Facebook? Yeah, go to Suitman, SuitmanComedy.com. Um, I am Suitman Productions on Facebook. I'm also Suitman206 on Instagram. Pretty much you look up Suitman anywhere, you'll find me. Uh, it's the logo with the jerry curl. And if you really want to have fun um, and you're wondering if this voice sounds familiar, you've probably seen me on some cut videos. We've got about 40 million hits between all their platforms. But, yeah, I'm the black Seth Rogen. <laughs> I'm Dante. So if you see yeah, not even you, you're going to fuck. I have seen him somewhere else. <laughs> If you've seen any of those cut videos, there's like eight of them out. There's another three or four of them coming out with me. Um, and you see, probably see me on cut as well. Just do whatever you can to support minorities and other people. Awesome, man. Dante, thanks for being on the show. Appreciate having you, man. We'll have you back soon because there's a lot we can talk about. I'm learning. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for having me. This was a blast. Awesome. Uh,